So hi, Joe Darling. What a brilliant name. I love your name, by the way. Darling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so welcome. So you are, so I, you have a business called Menopoised, mm -hmm. which, and you're an acupuncturist and you specialise in female health and the menopause okay. in particular. Um, so it'd be really good to kind of talk about your story because I know you started out in money broking. You're a money broker. Is that correct? I was. Yes, I was. I, I almost said for my sins, but hey, you know, it's all rich experience. I... It was a sliding door moment in my life. When I'd graduated from university, I decided uh, that I would move to London, moved into a house with a friend and, and soon to be other friends and was let down for lunch uh, meeting a friend and ended up going to meet an old school friend I hadn't seen for years who worked in the city. So I donned my brand new bright red uh, jigsaw suit and went into the city. Little did I know when I walked into her office and sat amongst the money brokers that they were all doing, you know, the bidding and the selling and they were talking about me in their language. I had no idea. Went off for lunch, came back and they went, oh, do you want to come for an interview? And what had happened was they sat a girl that morning and they kind of needed their quotient of women. Um, and there I was like a little fly ending up in the trap. Um, and it was quite, it was quite, you know, it was quite an incredible job on on so many levels. Um, not, part, not, you know, not many women get to do a job like that. And obviously I started in the back office because you can't just whip straight in there. Um, it was really, really, really hardcore and, and very hard, I think, for a woman. You know, there was perhaps one, one in 20 uh, and maybe more so in broking the particular thing I did was one of the most stressful jobs you could do in the city there was only one more that was more stressful um, because it was just constant squawk boxes you know two phones people shouting you could lose millions which I, I did I was about to say regularly but it wasn't a regular <laughs> occurrence but you know it's it's quite easy to lose money um, yeah so I did that and actually one of the things I don't often talk about, although I, I, I do more and more these days, because the older you are, the more it doesn't really matter. But it, it did actually break me. It broke me. Um, and I ended up leaving quite abruptly and going travelling. And it was while I was travelling that I found my new career at that time. Which was? Um, which was, I got into marketing. So I worked in, um, I don't know, for a computer company or something, quite a big one. And doing that job, I met other people who I live with, and blah, blah, blah. And I went traveling up the coast. And when I came back to England, I um, applied for a job working for a woman who'd come from America who worked in uh, marketing TV in the cable industry, which was brand new really over here. Um, and so, you know, we did some of the most, some of the firsts um, uh, working with Sky when Robbie Williams did a con the first pay per view concert. and um, first pay-per-view uh, boxing matches and all that kind of stuff um, but I got that job because I was I was persistent and I think I also I did sort of meditate on it I sat in a green you know in, a, in an open green space I went I want this job please let me have this job I'll do anything and I went off and I learned to type which you know which was no small achievement but so I went in as a PA and I ended up at the end of my well I was a director in that that company as it grew which was really it was great fun um but I ended up uh I was in that that arena for 10 10 years or so and ended up working on all different sides of it so I went to work for Flex Tech TV who um uh, Gold was one of the channels that I worked on and then I went to work for another company who was the first to do TV that you could pause and all of this sounds like yeah <laughs> because it's just so normal now we can pause you TV can whenever pause. we like no, I yeah <laughs> back in the day you couldn't but the kind of the running theme certainly from money broken to where I sit today is this passion about women and almost standing up for women I think I stood Stood. I think I stayed too long in money broking um, past where I should have done and I broke myself because I, I was so determined that women could do this job as well as men. So what, what was it that broke you about that do you think? I think it was just relentless I mean you start at seven o'clock in the morning you don't finish till five or six at night mm. there's no Sound, perhaps this sounds a bit pathetic but there's no such thing as a lunch break mm. um you're working continually and the level of stress so never really got as bad as it could have been had I been a more senior broker but 
when you think these, you see, we have these book, we had these boxes on the desk that are called squawk boxes, and you could have 10, 15 of those on your desk, and you'd be calling out numbers. And if the market started to change, you could be caught out by not changing your price, mm. which would be the thing that would then lose you millions. And it was just, um, I think it was just relentless stress. And for mo many of the people I worked with, they were, you know, cheating on their on their their loved ones um they were taking drugs or they were drinking or they were overeating you know it wasn't healthy so in all, that all the cliches of like the kind of the city trading environment is that it was that very much it was true? it was true you, <laughs> some of the things that happened to me you know i would one one of my favorite stories favorite um was i was it i was i was sellotaped into a chair yeah. Like, and I've got quite big boobs, so that was quite uncomfortable, really sellotaped. <laughs> and I was taken to the lift in the in the office and I was one at the top of the lift, one at the bottom. And they just kept pressing the button. And I sat in this lift, sellotaped in this chair, going up and down, <laughs> up and down, up and down. Was that like stress chair. relief for them? <laughs> yeah, I think it probably was. You know, it was, I mean, it was funny. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't, I couldn't have stayed if it hadn't, you know, the, the, yeah. the people in their hearts were, were really amazing. And I, you know, I did adore them and, 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 and I did love it. And they, in fact, said to me, if you ever try and do us for, um, you know, uh, sex, sexual harassment or anything yeah. like that, we'll get you back just as bad. Because I do give what, you know, I, I take and I give as well. So, you know, I'm not, I'm absolutely not blaming anybody, but it really was, I mean, you know, it's not something I, many people would dream of doing. And I think for a woman, it's particularly, uh, yeah, it's particularly not something you'd dream of, but it was great fun, you know, great fun for a while. We were in wine bars most evenings, you know, if you've got nothing else to worry about, you're eating Jap beautiful Japanese food cooked in front of you. So yeah, don't get me wrong. It wasn't all bad, but I think it was just the relentless stress, mm -hmm. um, which is, which is, out there anyway you don't need to go into a money breaking scenario to get that <laughs> no that is true so you went from there into marketing and you yes. did marketing about 10 years and yeah like, that's right yeah and so then how yeah. did you get from there to so you became an acupuncturist i became an acupuncturist so so i was working um i'd done tv in london and i wanted to live i moved from london to brighton so i started working for capital radio they at that time owned lots of regional radio stations so I started working in a regional radio station as part of the management team and it was a brilliant job great fun you know I've met some amazing people not just the, you know the people that I worked with were brilliant but then you know people like Julie and Clary would stop by my desk not not saying he knew me or anything I'm just saying he might have been going outside and coming back in past my desk and have you like oh, oh you know all sorts of people amazing um and it was, we had um, Party in the Park, which was, uh, I took it from being like a 10,000 pound, a 10,000, 10,000 people event to, we, it became about, and it wasn't that, it was only about 100,000 to 10,000, but we ticketed it, which was quite controversial, but it was huge, you know, headline acts at that time, Daniel Bedingfield and the like, and really great fun, really great fun. But what you realise as you age is, it's not so much fun and you kind of feel like you want to, step aside and let someone younger go in and enjoy it and what I realized was you know marketing is a wonderful particularly in tv and radio and the media is wonderful but I saw it more as a young person's game now that sounds really like oh my god but but what you realize about what I do now is the grayer I get the more of a sage people think I am so I keep a little bit of grayness just to remind like me wisdom. That I do <laughs> to my, my inner wisdom and um, you know and I could actually only be practicing a week but you'd still think that I was you know because I'm older yeah. um and I actually think having all those life experiences is, makes you a, a better a therapist and practitioner um and I'd had my own experience of acupuncture in fact what I forgot was my very first uh, acupuncture was in my back and it just worked just like that but the doctor was a friend of the family and I just I didn't really think much of it and I totally really forgotten that I'd ever had it until I was struggling to conceive it, it took us a couple of years um, for me to get pregnant I went to see an acupuncturist and he said to me you'll be pregnant in three months and in three months um, he knew that I was pregnant because he could feel it on my pulse and I thought oh my god this is some kind of wizardry this is amazing um, and now I'm an acupuncturist 
I know that I would never say to someone, you'll be pregnant in three months because <laughs> I'm not doing the full job, right? And you can't make any guarantees. And secondly, I know what he feels on the pulse because I feel it too. And I don't, you know, we don't tell our patients when we know because it's not our place. They will know in their own time. And, you know, you make sure they look after each, look after themselves, um, but you don't tell them. So, and, and that was really what, what did it. And it was a really amazing set of circumstances. So I, I put down my, partly was my acupuncture and also having reflexology, partly that, but also partly the fact that I changed jobs and that would be one of my biggest um, recommendations and it, and it is clinically to people if the job is stressful mm. then getting pregnant is tough I mean don't get me wrong women can get pregnant through the most stressful of, of, of situations but it you know if you've been trying for a while little things you can do like changing your job little um can be really 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 helpful yeah. so I did that and I was pregnant within a few months of starting with a new company and then it was a small company and I went off, had Jacob, came back after nine months. The business wasn't doing quite as well. So I negotiated to make myself redundant. And what happened was for the first time ever and probably ever in the future, the acupuncture course I, uh, I undertook was delayed by three months so that I could finish in the November and then go and start training in the January. And, you know, that's just, that's just amazing isn't it so I then I did that it was really hard because it was the first time they'd taken a four-year course and made it into two and a half years uh, no sorry three it should have been three years because we started late it was two and a half years and 19 of us started and three of us graduated because yeah. it again it was another breaking <laughs> moment um but no but but wonderful you know the most amazing thing I, I've ever done and and yeah, I, I change. I, I don't say this from a place of big headedness, but I change women's lives. And I forget that it's when I'm working, when people tell me that and when people I'm working with. Um, yeah, tell me it's it's amazing because, you know, you're always looking at other people, aren't you thinking how amazing they are always. And, I've, and I work with people who I feel that way about. And then they turn to me and they go, yeah, but you're magic. You, you know, you actually cured my hay fever. I didn't have to come back and see you for six months, six years. You, you know, done this, you've done this. And you forget, you know, I can turn babies. This, and I don't say it like that. It's not me. It's the acupuncture. I'm just the, you know, the, the channel for the acupuncture. But that is true of all of us. We, the things that we are able to do or we find easy to do, because over time we've learned it. It's, you know, it's not like you woke up one day and had these powers because they would be incredible yeah. to you, but you learnt them over time and you understand how you learnt them. So to you, it's completely natural, but to someone else, it's incredible. Um, That's it. Yeah. But so I've got, I've got to ask, how, what is the difference you feel in a pulse when someone's pregnant? So um, you're going to have to forgive some of the terminology. So um, babies are what we, so we talk about climates in terms yeah. of imbalances in the body. So we talk about there being wind in the body or heat or cold or whatever. And one of the, one of the climates we talk about is damp yeah. and babies are damp. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you know, they're like this, almost this foreign body inside you. Yeah. And so on a particular pulse, you will feel this dampness and I guess because you're you're working with someone's fertility you're looking for that quality and because yeah. you would have treated that person before you would know that that's different in their pulse so I've had women come to me who desperately upset I mean I treat a lot of IVF patients yeah. um, because they need a lot of support I've had women come to me desperate and sad because they're not pregnant and I've known that they are <laughs> <laughs> for some reason you know sometimes a pregnancy test doesn't show positive yeah. immediately but I've known that they are and you can't, and, and can't tell them <laughs> can't say but equally you know the thing the reason one of the reasons why is because equally it can happen the other way too yeah and that's one of the hardest yeah. times um but again what is really wonderful is that if there is a situation where a woman needs some support when the baby isn't viable, I can help them with that as well. And I, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult thing, but if you can do, in my opinion, if you can you affect your health naturally, that's got to be, mm. that's got to be a good thing rather than using chemicals or, or anything else. So. Yeah. I think it's really interesting, you know, talking about 
kind of like you being seen as kind of wiser now or, or kind of or life experience. And I think in a way that like our career has seasons, isn't it? And you Definitely. often you have people who, 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 especially sort of in their late 30s and 40s who do a big career change. And I think, you know, when we're in our 20s and we're, we're going out and so we are selfish because ourself is all we have to think about at that time. So we're kind of forging ahead and we're experiencing life. And as we go through life, we, we, I think we gain empathy as we get older, and particularly for me being a mother, like you, I always worked in very male environments. Mm. I'm with men, I liked men, they were very, you know, as a generalization, they're quite uncomplicated. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great you knew where you were with a man um and I like working with men and but when I became a mother I sort of fell in love with women you know and and the the communities that women build with each other and the support that women give this is again huge generalization because there are there are men that are more female and in, in their attributes and who sits a female attribute but as a whole, um, I do find that sort of when you see at schools, you know, the mums become friends yes. and, and, and you see the mums get together and when they all talk, they'll go, oh yeah, I do that too, or I know that. They're looking for commonalities, whereas yes. some of the dads will be like, well, more kind of like how, oh, you drive a, you drive a Ford, I drive a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Those important things, right? Exactly. But, um, but no, I do think like, you know, things come in seasons and often, mm -hmm this idea that the 20s are your kind of career heyday uh, maybe you hit your peak in your early 30s but it's downhill from there actually yeah. we get better with age oh um, and I think doubt. companies that don't recognize that miss out hugely don't they without a doubt can I just interrupt briefly I, I've yes. got my neighbors doing some uh, work next door some electrics can you hear that no Oh, great. OK, I just wanted to check because I'll put some headphones on if you can. Great. It's the timing. It's always the way. And I have a small dog in the room who's likely to kick off if she sees a bird. So we'll just go with whatever oh, it is. You hear that? Like you're not being attacked by a wild animal then? No, no. It's just Margot the dog. Um, I, I totally agree about the seasonality thing. And I think, you know, again, really interesting. I can bring everything back to Chinese medicine, but, you know, it, it's all about seasons. And, and, and yeah, we, we you can't what doesn't break you makes you stronger and all the rest of the cliches but you can only learn from it and that's why talking about the money breaking thing is you know I've never talked about it before really but now I think it's really important to talk about it because as you say when you're younger you you do these things and it's nothing to be embarrassed that I tried really bloody hard and I ended up breaking myself you know there's nothing there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that no, but um, everything we don't gain wisdom and strength through good times. No. Through, and if you think, and you think about kind of the stories that you tell, they tend to be like the kind of more meaty things, don't they? Yes. And the things, yes. that, and the people we admire, like the, you know, the people who've had amazing lives, often have had. Well, hard to look at Nelson Mandela. You know, he wouldn't have been the person he ended up being and have the impact on the world he had had he not been through what he'd been through, but also, yes. but l learned from it. And made decisions, I love, the right decisions afterwards. I love that you say Nelson Mandela because as she was saying that, all I could think of was Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very different okay, example. That shows us where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. It's absolutely true. Out of adversity, it, it, it com completely. Yeah. But yeah, there, I, there is a really important choice that you make as well. Because I, I remember, like uh, reading, um, it was uh, Clinton was he interviewed Nelson Mandela, and he said he'd watched Nelson Mandela leave prison. And like he got up in the middle of the night to watch it because of the time difference. Mm. And he and he asked him, he said, I don't know if I was imagining it. He said, but when you first came out, there was this flash of anger across your face and then you smiled. Did I, did I, did, was, that, was, was that true? And Nelson Mandela said, I'm really ashamed that you saw that. He said, yes. He said, when I first came out, I felt like, you know, like 27, 28 years of anger. Yes. And, he, and, and, and I, but I realized that if I took that anger out into the world with me, I'd still be in prison. So he, and I think that's, that's really beautiful. He made a conscious choice and he would have been justified to be angry and to bring that with yeah. him. He made a conscious, which isn't an easy choice to make. No. But I think, you know, we all do have that, don't we? When we can look back at things that happened to us and make ourselves victims and keep, carry that victimhood on. Or we can decide like, that was something that happened to me, but I can choose to like, just leave that behind. Because when you it's, forgive, you leave it behind. It's always choice, isn't it? That's, that made me go completely tingly when you said that about Nelson Mandela, because that's, you know, wow, to have that, that insight. But it's so true, you know, I think, 
there's lots of things that have happened in my life that I would hold on to and say have caused x y and z mm -hmm. and I you know as we all do as mothers or parents I worry about my son a lot and one of the things I remember saying to my neighbor who's very straightforward about things saying you know gosh my son's an only child and I'd really love him to have siblings and she'd say well I've got three one's an oldest child one's a middle child and one's a youngest child and you know so everybody has something <laughs> there were any shoes <laughs> we all have something yeah, yeah. you know I, I once had a patient it was a really profound moment for me and I repeat it often who I can't remember what the outcome was but something had happened at school which had and it was literally some girls had tripped her over um and it had a massive effect and this was a woman in her 40s for the whole of her life and when she told me the story it was about her walking around a corner and getting tripped over and I said you know what's really weird about that is supposing I didn't know it was you that was coming around the corner supposing that wasn't an act of bullying or whatever it was and it was just another sliding door moment but you've carried that mm -hmm. I wasn't saying quite as accusatory as that but <laughs> you've ruined your life by the you know that that was my thing yeah you're such a woman mm -hmm. not not a, it wasn't meant that way at all but you know when you yeah. start to think about how how we can hang on to these things and I think I wonder if it's the human condition to hang on to to stuff because um, in the last few years I've gone through a divorce and I my parents were divorced too and that was one of the things I would perhaps hang stuff on and I watched my son sometimes hanging stuff on that you know like I must have two PS5s because I've got two homes to live in you know that kind of shizzle um, but I watch him and I and I try and help him not to do that because I think that's really easy then I think well he'll probably find something else that he can hang on to because I think it's the human condition yeah. I think it's how we are I think you know more more so now maybe than ever which it's a blame culture where it can't possibly be our fault but I think what you're saying also <laughs> is that as we age we can look at things differently we yeah. can let there's go of what distance. doesn't serve there's more distance from things so we, yeah, yeah we have that time but I think you know when we when we blame others we don't have an opportunity for, uh, for, to do for learning do we because no. if, even if something happened to us from someone else we can say you know how do I move past this how do I let go of that and do I want to let what someone else has done to me be part of my story how do I want it to be part of my story going forward yes one, this is our life you know this is yes life living do we yes. want therefore to live a half-life because someone has done something to us however awful that may have been and however unfair it, it they, like that Nelson Mandela, you know, if he had continued to, to carry that anger and resentment, he would still be in prison in effect because that prison sentence yeah. is continuing. So yeah. he had to choose to leave that behind. Yeah, gosh, that's absolutely so true. So true. And it's, sometimes it's hard to see that you're doing that. Yeah, which is why you see in others, it's less easy in ourselves, ah, isn't it? For sure. Which is why I love coaching. You know, I, I, I started having coaching last year and my coach is quite special. She calls herself a guide for unicorns. And that would have just, when I started that, just made me roar. I might be an acupuncturist, but I'm not, a you know, I'm not perhaps stereotypical acupuncturist. I'm not wearing tie dye. In fact, most of us don't, but we have that, people have a perception of us. But, you know, it's so liberating to look at what my drivers and values were. And you carry these things around, these, um, they're, they're, they're both gifts and constraints at the same time, but you carry these around. It, According to whose narrative, you know, exactly. someone would say, I'd say X, Y, Z, according to who? Is that, did, is that one of your rules? And it's like, wow, okay. It's amazing how much we take those. Like when I, I'm, I, I'm, I married a second time and I was always a good girl growing up. And, and it was always, you know, someone who got divorced was bad. They just, yeah. they just failed. And oh when I got divorced, for good reason, <laughs> um, and I was relieved to leave my marriage, I had this massive weight of faith. This, uh, and it wasn't a conscious thing. I, I kind of worked it out that, that yeah. I'd, I'd all, the, all the, the, the sort of conceptions about myself of being this type of person that I'd carried my whole life that were given to me by other people. Suddenly I'd done something that was counter to that. But I found to me, it was really liberating. Once I'd, I'd made a piece of that, that, I'm divorced, it's fine to be divorced. That's not my thing. I was able to get rid of all of the expectations other people placed on me and just yeah. really live to, you know, obviously to my values and to, to be a good person. 
but there's something really liberating about saying just because your parents said oh you're rubbish at maths but you're really good at English or you know yeah. basic things like that, that we just take with us yeah and I'd say you know the same thing about divorce um in fact two really powerful things that happened to me in the last well several but you know two really powerful things one was divorce and I couldn't agree with you more about other people's perceptions of what divorce is and I even had one person who was going through who was a little bit further behind me can you hear the banging now it sounds almost like a womb like you know like a baby's heartbeat in a womb <laughs> it's like they're in my house ah! um, but this person you know, I was probably six months six months ahead of her in the divorce process. And she was kind of just coming to the breaking up point of her relationship. And I remember her saying, I just don't want to be that woman. I just don't want to be that divorced woman. And I, and I thought, wow, that's really insightful that you're saying that to me because that's actually what I am. But I forgive and I understand because that's how I felt. Mm. That, you know, wow, how many more times can we get shamed as women, you know, to be that divorced woman? I mean, wow, unbelievable. But, but yeah, you just, it's partly been the making of me, to be honest. Mm. Um, we don't, we, we fairly amicable relationship, but it's partly been the making of me. And one of the other things I've done, which has really given me space in my life and actually enabled me to go on and do what I'm doing now, was I stopped drinking. And I did that three years ago. And and it's one of the most powerful things you can do. And I don't, I'm not preachy about it. I just hope that people see, you know, that not drinking can really, really serve you. And I think if we started again with drinking, it wouldn't be allowed because it's a drug, no doubt. And partly it's the sugar that's the problem. Um, because what <laughs> happens is you take something that makes you not quite, not think quite straight alongside something which is so addictive and so Moorish that you can't stop and you end up with, you know, two bottles of wine down the line. And it's given me back so much freedom, even, I mean, silly things like not now, but during lockdown, but, um, you know, being able to drive and go out and drive. And that is never, you know, and what I found out also is that I was completely daft on alcohol and I'm completely daft without alcohol. You know, you think somehow it's, it, I know it changes you, but it, I'm still, as, I'm still, the, I'm very much still the same, <laughs> which is actually, you know, it's a sort of scary, but also wonderful revelation that, you know, I didn't need alcohol to do that. So yeah, just talking about things that change you and letting go and finding and finding that space for yourself. And particularly as you age, because as you age, you know, your body does wear out of course and yeah. and, and, until well, you die I, I have not given up drinking um I, I do drink and nor do you need to but... no but I will say the uh, the hangovers are worse as you get older <laughs> so... yeah I definitely found that and the, the amount I could drink was getting worse as well oh no I, I, I'm, I've become a real lightweight now have you yeah no I can't yeah I can't drink as much so you I don't drink a huge amount but I drink less in a night now than I would drink before I went out when I was younger wow your preloading days are over yeah oh, definitely part, part of that is, I don't know if you can compare that against a, a man in your life but um part of that is about being a woman being a woman that's aging because our livers process all our hormones and our our hormonal complexity is vast and and we just can't you know i'm sorry to say this but as you age even more <laughs> even more how well, rude. I, I, i'm holding on to the fact my mum is in her 70s and she still likes a drink so i'm like yeah, i hope i've go got with the it. genes <laughs> genetics is all about that yeah anyway I'm, let's let's not go down the road on the alcohol and my, and my grandmother uh, you know she, uh, she's dead now but when um her, when I used to see her she just kissed you on the lips you're a child and there was a particular flavor to granny's kisses and it wasn't until I started drinking whiskey as an adult <laughs> I realized what was it <laughs> like and apparently she'd wake up with that she liked whiskey in the morning to granny so uh that's the kind of love old her. woman I want to be <laughs> love her was she Scottish by any chance <laughs> nope just loved whiskey <laughs> hey she just loved no, whiskey just I, just, I, just, I was just wondering there for a minute whether she was Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So from whiskey to the menopause. Oh, my word. So, I mean, like, it's such a big, I mean, I'm not there yet, um, but a lot of my friends are. And I know, so you, you're an acupuncturist, you specialise in, in female health, particularly. Yeah. Um, so how did you, so you, obviously you've got menopause as a business now. So how did yeah. you get there? What, what was the kind of journey there? Well, what happened was, Ten, as you say, 10 years working in women's health and, and 
at the beginning it was more about fertility because that was the thing and what else is still very much about fertility but um that was the thing that was really interesting for me and you tend to attract you know what, what you know about and I'd written a paper about IVF and acupuncture which was published and so I guess I was getting a bit of a reputation um, and I set up my own natural health clinic again specializing in treating women I much prefer to work with women and partly because um I can't remember what, I think it's the fifth it, fifth sign or something your period it when working with women is so much easier because everything they can tell you about your, their period gives you an insight into so much of them um you know yeah it just does like I can't even begin to try and explain what I mean by that but if someone has p painful periods then then I know the point immediately that I need to go to which you just wouldn't get with men anyhow so you're working in fertility, which obviously led naturally into working in uh, working with pregnancy as well and turning babies and helping with natural induction and, you know, all that kind of wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, and I set up this natural health clinic and opposite a private hospital where I was working, treating cancer patients, working with a clinical oncologist as part of their their um, team. And um, what I found there was that women going through cancer treatment, their menopause starts so abruptly, it's like this, because their hormones get turned off. And um, the, the intensity of, their, of the, the menopause is so different to, to what you experience naturally, because when you go through it naturally, your hormones dwindle gradually for most women. But when you're going through cancer treatment, it's just, it's, they're just turned off. And I had women that could barely make it to my clinic because they, um they couldn't drive their flushes were so so bad and it was treating these women it was going through my own natural menopause and starting to experience what flushes and night sweats were really what they were really about and the diagnosis with my best friend's breast cancer and her subsequent treatment which really kind of pushed me from a very busy clinic treating women in two rooms you know trying to see as many women as I could to what can I do outside of the confines space and time so I looked around to see if there was another way of treating you know finding a proxy for needles really and I came across this idea of placing a magnet on a heat clearing point for acupuncture and acupuncture is part of Chinese medicine as a whole which is the most used medicine in the world it's one of the oldest medicines in the world. So it's used by millions. And for me, it needs no, uh, it's researched thoroughly, but you know, they are, I, I see it working every day. So I started to use this, this magnet in clinic with people and noticed that it was really, really improving their flushes doing, you know, it's going really, really well. So I thought, okay, this could be something I might be able to extend the practice with. So I did some research. And I had the data looked at by, we collected the data, but Sussex Innovation Centre, which is wholly owned by Sussex University, looked at the data for us and agreed, yes, it's working for around 80% of women and it's helping with intensity and frequency of these flushes. So um, I then did some crowdfunding and uh, got some money in and started working, well, I'd already started working on the brand because being ex-marketing, I'd also kind of looked around when I was looking for natural solutions and found there weren't very many that were kind of proven solutions. There weren't very many that, certainly in the natural arena, that looked any good, not beautiful. And, you know, I just felt that was really feeding into this feeling that women have of not being worthy and not to get too political about it. But, you know, when you start looking into women's health, when you start looking into women in the world, really, you find that the world is really set up for the average white male um and uh, you know there's so much more women often joke about menopause that you know if men were going through it there'd be an awful lot more done about it so and lots of women either want to or need to find natural solutions and even women on hrt still you know the side effects of hrt it, it's a medicine it, it's not flawless no medicine is flawless and no medicine is perfect even chinese medicine even though you see the differences with natural medicine, there aren't any side effects, it works or it doesn't. So yeah, so, so kind of coming up against all these different things, I thought, oh wow, this is amazing. It works, it's beautiful. Um, so let's go for it. So I started Menopoised and 
at the minute it's uh, the magnet product which is just for clearing heat because that's what we've researched but actually women are telling us more that it's really helping with migraines it's helping with anxiety it's helping with sleep so we want to try and catalyze that on that and actually there's 34 symptoms of menopause that are I hate the word symptoms actually because it's not a disease they're issues it's not symptoms um that we can address I mean acupuncture is amazing got 400 points so we can address a lot of these problems but for now we started with flushes and night sweats anxiety migraines energy those sort of things they're all in the pipeline and we've also got some aromatherapy just because I think women need to have you, you can use aromatherapy for so many things you know clearing the mind and calming and all those things um so that's that's the product and we're working on well we're looking at funding at the moment is is what we're working on um, getting that organized we've just been part of a program and hope to move into a bigger program to help us really get the word out on a on a bigger scale we we are you know we're selling the product and we get the most amazing feedback you know life saving all the stuff that i've had in my clinic but more you know um keeping women in the, in the workplace which you know people were leaving work because they they mm -hmm. it was so debilitating because they weren't sleeping etc we've just done a trial with a major force um in the uk and we're waiting to hear and that's gone really well as well similar sort of numbers 80 percent efficacy so we're just waiting to hear how that may roll out so it's just it's just right at the beginning of something really exciting and That's brilliant where would you like to see it like in 10 years time where what where will menopause menopause be then where will menopause be well it will be a huge a much bigger range of products we've got um, a cream as well that really works but we can't do everything all at once and um, so a broader range of products I, you know i'd love to see it I mean, it's already accepted by oncologists and doctors, but I'd like to see it more broadly accepted. And when we first started physically, I was talking about it being seen in Space NK, but I'm not sure if that's the place for us. But, you know, more, more widely available. I don't want to put my, you know, eggs in any basket, whoever, however, however we can reach the most number of women. We've, we're trademarked across the world, so that's, that's also yeah. the plan. Yeah. Um, and we get loads of requests from women um, particularly Australia and New Zealand because they're very into natural health but we've got to start in this country and get our systems mm -hmm. everything in place before we can extend so yeah worldwide supporting women naturally without side effects is where I think really it's like brilliant it. like there's so much I mean we talked about Meg menopause um, Meg, Meg's menopause Meg Matthews you know obviously spoken to her there's so much out there about the menopause now and you know we, we talked before we, we came on here about shame and how much shame is attached to you know period shame and you know yes. and you know and the same with menopause as well and it's the thing that people didn't talk about yes um and if you and if you don't talk about it you end up in this silo exactly and, and then everyone thinks that their experience is is they don't get the help so i think what's yeah. great now is there's this huge wave of women out there talking about so just yeah being vocal about it and, and unashamedly that's why I mean you know I said to Meg when I spoke to her I love the fact that Meg Matthews talk about menopause because you don't associate Meg Matthews with that you associate her with kind of rock and roll and yeah. falling out of nightclubs when she was you know when she was younger so for her to 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 be the face of menopause is great because it's like if she's talking about it it's not just this kind of old lady thing um, yeah and you know four powerful women to talk about it and to, to take the shame and stigma away because that's when other people can speak up and, and people can then say well the, this symptom hurts me or, or, it, or, it, or this this issue affects my life and that's when people like you come up with solutions yeah because yeah there's lots of creative people out there who can come up with different ways to help but yeah. they need to know it's a problem absolutely yeah and you're right about the issues that women suffer I mean some of them are absolutely so debilitating and I suppose in my situation, I've seen lots of debilitating problems with women. You know, I've I've, I've treated women with um, I can't remember the name of the problem now, but excruciatingly painful vaginas, and it's not a difficult thing for me to treat with Chinese medicine. So I guess I, I 
I'm an eternal optimist and I and I've seen how much this can I, I don't know I just feel so bloody passionate about natural medicine and about the fact that it works because I've seen it I've seen it and you can't keep quiet at that point and I guess it's the same for Meg you know she's seen that she's seen something that well she's experiencing something so bloody awful you know for yeah. her and and she can't keep quiet about it and I think that's that's how I feel and, and, and you know I do feel the injustice of the world um you know there's so few women entrepreneurs that's the when I did the crowdfunding I did it with the support of back her business which was a Nat West initiative because they're uh, one of their top women uh, said you know how, how few women entrepreneurs there were out there and she wanted to support specifically women which is just brilliant um because it's it, you know and I, I I'm I, I hear that investors are mainly men as well so that's going to be really interesting when we come to that point because uh there's an education piece there as well so that, that'll be least, an interesting conversations <laughs> there are there are increasingly I'm seeing like more female angel investors yes and, and looking to invest in female-owned businesses as well yes but yeah increasingly definitely. there's there there is more of an audience for that yeah which is great and I hope I can be one of those you know in 10 years time I hope I can be one of those too because I know how difficult it is you know for good and for bad my dad died halfway through my crowdfunding last year and I and I kind of laugh because he was a huge entrepreneur a huge impact on my life um and and he gave me that real attitude of you know you can do it you know you anyone you can do it so um uh, my brother says I speak to him more now he's dead than I did when he was <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's a whole nother story but um no it, uh, him dying enabled me and it was quite a shock really because uh, it was a, a quite a short illness but um him dying enabled me to carry on financing this and I you know the money I put in is more than I put in for when I retrained to be an acupuncturist and and that was a remortgage job mm. to be an acupuncturist and I think that's one of the when we're talking about changing careers I think that's one of the things that puts people off but my attitude with money is it's always been it will come and it always does and I'm not talking about bank of mum and dad I'm I'm just you know if you need it it will it will come the universe is not going to let you mm. fall flat on your ass and you know it will come and especially if you're following your dreams and doing the right stuff so I don't know why I'm blathering on about all this but I, I think you know it's that inspiration of being an entrepreneurial woman and doing it and and knowing that there's this thing about we were talking earlier about the linear path and the expectation that things are linear and they're not I, I remember seeing a picture of an entrepreneurial path and it's like climbing a mountain but then you go down and then you come back up again you go and when and I think about the challenges I as well and it starts again yeah as long as you don't go further backwards well even if you do you're learning right so you're, you're gaining something yeah. but um yeah the de definitely there have been challenges along the way and, and and I mean I could be sitting here now saying well you know we're not getting as many sales as we need and I need to get funding and everything I don't see it like that at all I'm really comfortable with the level of sales we get I'm really I love the feedback but I, that we get when we get it because you know when something works people don't really tell you all that much no, they they? Complain when things go wrong <laughs> yeah but so we don't get so much of that um but you know it's being in the communities as well online communities and and suddenly people are talking about your product and you know i'm the biggest menopause fan no i'm the biggest and you're like oh this is amazing <laughs> stuff um so yeah a bit of building community is also a really big thing for me as well and i think that's the shame busting thing and one of the one of the things that we do on the shame front is to, we talk a lot about the shame and the exposing of menopause, as it were, the talking about it, the, the busting of the taboo. But I don't necessarily expect other women to want to do that. I would love it if they join me on that. But if they don't, they don't. And we don't brand any of our packaging, which I would love to do as a marketer. But we recognize that not everyone wants to have it's all very discreet and beautiful but we recognize not everyone wants that through their their post box so it's like join us and be militant if you want to but if you don't we're doing it anyway so it's all good we're, it works whichever way brilliant well it's been i'm so excited to see a product you, you know like i'm i'm a big fan of natural medicine anyway and i always try the natural way for something um and the fact that you're out there talking about menopause and creating products to help women it's brilliant and thank you i hope you get your next round of funding thank you in 10 years time that it's an international brand Woohoo! in space nk <laughs>
<laughs> or wherever, or wherever, super drunk. <laughs> and thank you so much for talking to me. It's been thank a real you. pleasure. Thanks, Pat. Um, and where can people find, what's your website? Where can they find? The you? website is menopause.co.uk. Really okay. simple. I'm and we're on uh, Instagram and Facebook at Menopoised. It'd be lovely if people came and found, found us and joined us and got involved in the conversation and building that community. And even if you're not menopausal yet, it's really worth joining the conversation because that's, you know, busting the taboo is about younger women knowing that it's not all doom and gloom when you get there. It, it can yeah. be really, really awesome. So join us now. Yeah. And also, I think as well, knowing what some of the signs are so that you don't think you're going crazy, like, yes, you actually can help yourself when it when you are heading that way. Absolutely. Totally. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you very much. Pleasure.